Chapter 5. An Appealing Illusion But liberal Catholicism has a powerful attraction for souls today sick of the truth. Playing firstly with words, it soon plays with ideas, undermines true principles, and leads to the uttering of tremendous falsehoods, such as that man and God are quite different since the French Revolution from what they were. This is heresy and blasphemy. This is not an enemy to be scorned, even though he is armed only with pipe dreams. There are pipe dreams that reason must not challenge on her own. She will be defeated, not by the pipe dreams, but by the sympathy souls have for them. Souls are sick, and with a terrible sickness, they are weary of the truth and are terrified by it. In souls that are still Christian, this illness shows itself in a lack of revulsion for heresy, in an habitual indulgence toward error, and a certain taste for the traps it sets, often in a shameful eagerness to get caught in them. Evil is nothing new. It is rooted in the heart of man. I loved being caught, said St. Augustine. Father Faber described its political traits in the present age. The liberal siren hides her fishtail, shows her face wreathed in smiles, and holds a cross in her hand. She draws souls with ease to the edge of the abyss, seducing the eyes, the reason, and the heart. If a firm faith that is, an obedient faith, does not hold us back, we are lost. If we do not carefully watch over ourselves, we may end up not being able to recognize ourselves. Today's world echoes the siren's song in dangerous ways. Several of the so-called liberal maxims sound good, yet they are false, and will compromise anyone who does not meet them with an absolute refusal. But only the faith can provide such absolutely victorious arguments. It alone recognizes the marked card. There is a great danger and the slightest equivocation. Playing with words is the death blow for principles in a soul that is secretly tempted. Don't forget that heresy excels in flattering any weaknesses and it turns to its advantage all of our inordinate desires. Liberal Catholicism is a very versatile garment, a garment to wear at the court or at the academy, a garment of glory. It displays the colors of prestige without overstepping the bounds of prudence. It enters a church and is received in every palace and goes just as well in all the taverns such great advantages, and they seem to come at so low a price. Accept a few liberal phrases, disclaim a few intolerant expressions. No, not even. Merely shout, hooray, for one such phrase, and groan a bit for another. That's all that's really needed. The liberal church requires no further profession of faith. Utter the sacramental words of liberalism, and you have already gone a long way. This shift of words quickly brings about an enormous shift of ideas. Along comes a special pleader who knows how to cast a veil of beautiful illusions over the nakedness of a conscience henceforth anxious to be deluded, and the liberal thesis triumphs. The truth is suddenly false and falsehood true. You lend an ear. You are soon repeating enormous falsehoods. You no longer have any difficulty in admitting that since 1789, everything has quite changed, not only on earth, but in heaven as well. That there is a new mankind on earth, and a new God in heaven. Typical of heresy, Explicitly or implicitly, explicitly or implicitly, every heresy has uttered the same blasphemy. 
Let us pause to consider for a moment. Stop.